A wonderful day to you, our dear viewers. Welcome to another edition of the Complete Sports Update. My name is Abib Kuranga. This is the show where we we'll bring to you the latest and trending stories in the world of sports. For this week's episode, we shall be reviewing some of the matches played across the Europe Top 5 leagues, and Nigeria will immensely gain if Amunike is appointed the Super Eagles coach. That's according to former Super Eagles manager Joe Bonfrey. We shall be wrapping things up as far as proceedings is concerned with Team Nigeria's ongoing African Games campaign in Ghana. Do sit back, relax, and enjoy because this is the Complete Sports Update. For today's episode, I'm being joined alongside James Agribian. Together, we shall be taking you through the journey as far as sports is concerned. Welcome back to the show, James. Thank you very much. And how is the everything as far as uh, the sporting world is concerned? You know, the Super Eagles still looking for who to uh, take over the helm of affairs after the resignation of Ose Pisero. So, you know, uh, and the news have been spreading all around like a wildfire that uh, Emmanuel Amunike is the ideal candidate to take over from Ose Pisero and also the former manager of the Super Eagles who actually won the second half con title for Nigeria in 1994 have also staked his claim on Emmanuel Amunike and he said that Amunike has that capability to lead Nigeria to the glory uh, land or to the glory uh, days. What do you have to say as regards to the uh, uh, thoughts of Joe Bofre? Yeah, um, uh, Joe Bonfrey, uh, somebody who was part of a claim of coaching crew at the 1994 um, AFCON and also at the 1994 World Cup. And he's somebody who knows the team, who coached Aminike too, so he has his reasons why he feels Aminike has what it takes. Um, Aminike too has um, indicated his interest in uh, coaching the Super Eagles. You know, he was assistant to Austin Iguavon when the team beat Ghana in the World Cup qualifiers, yeah. you know, so a lot of people have been saying that he has what it takes, that he can do the job, but we have to keep our fingers crossed. Um, fine, uh, he was somebody who took the golden nick belts to the World Cup triumph in 2015 but that's the different thing when it comes to the Super Eagles you know so um you cannot call him a novice because he qualified Tanzania for the AFCON in 2019 yeah. you know so uh, he's somebody that the knowledge about him has been very very vocal and a lot of people want him to be coach you know so let, let's just keep our fingers crossed and don't get ahead of ourselves uh, hopefully even if that if he should get the nod to coach the team the question is, will the NFL give him the free hand to work? You see many cases where local coaches, after they come on board, it becomes another thing. I look at the likes of uh, Steven, the late Stephen Keshi, Amadi Shaibu, and these are people who, who came on board. They had a good uh, beginning, but later on, started hearing cases of unpaid um, salaries, and they didn't, uh, they, they see there was no contract signed, you know. So that's the, always the issue with, when it comes to coaching, uh, local coaches, which I don't always fancy, because mm -hmm. finally, you have the good. Uh, they, can, they might have everything, but we give them the free hand to coach. So it's one thing to want this person to to be the head coach, but another thing is will the NFF do the needful? So that will give them the free hand. Yes, to work and at least do what they, they need to do to, to bring out the best in the team. You know, uh, there have been some conspiracy theories as regards to the thoughts of uh, Bonfrey, you know, wanting Amonike to be appointed by the NFF with, you know, with the thoughts lining with, you know, him being the assistant and some other. So, so people were actually saying he actually wanted to be among, uh, you know, the coaching crew of uh, the Super Eagles. Just uh, look at what he said. He said, yes, he said, and I quote, yes, I agree Nigeria needs a local coach at the moment, not a foreigner. But the country will have everything to gain if the authorities appoint Emmanuel Amonike for the job. I know him very well. He has a very strong mentality. He has the discipline and technical savvy to achieve results. In fact, if the Federation calls me to provide technical backup to Amonike, I will gladly accept the tax, he said during the interview. So what do you have to say as regards to his thought right then? Do you think he's trying to, you know, you know, find his way back into the Super Eagle set up once more. Uh, I, I, I don't want to believe that he still has uh, the ambition of being part of the Super Eagle coaching crew. It won't be a good idea because, I mean, this is somebody who has left, I don't know, the last time he coached. So, and whatever he did in the past, other things, a lot of things have changed. This is not the same set of players that he, he handled. The mentality is different from where, what it used to be. I don't know how, how 
in touch he is with the current uh, trend of uh, in terms of football, you know. Fine, he's, he's, a, he's a coach, he, he understands all this thing, but times have changed. So mm. the, the, the set of players who are there now, they are not the kind of players that he handled, you know. So, um, like I said, he's just giving out his own opinion, his own views, that what he feels uh, should be the best for the Super Eagles, you know. So, uh, everything still boils down to the NFF. They are the one that, at the end of the day, are the one that will still come out and say, this is the person that we want. So, let's just wait and see what the NFF have up their sleeves. Oh, wow. So, uh, we have to take uh, James Aguirre's word uh, by it because whatever he says definitely is his own thoughts and no one else. So, let's look at uh, Team Nigeria's uh, ongoing uh, African games, you know, in Ghana. Mm. They've been, you know, performing incredibly well, I must say to you. I think they are now second yeah. on the medals list. A uh, uh, drift of uh, Egypt mm. in in the summits currently. So you know the team, the Flying Eagles, most especially under the tutelage of uh, Ladambo. So you know they also play their game, which they lost against Uganda, and they also played against uh, South Sudan, which they also won by a goal to mm. not all, all thanks to. Uh, uh, Isaac, uh, Isaac has a penalty yeah. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the second half. So what do you have to say about Team Nigeria's performance generally in the African games in Ghana? Well, a good one for Team Nigeria. You know, they started off on a, on a, on a slow note, um, but they just picked up. You know, it, doesn't, it didn't come as a surprise to me because all this, the, the sport that fed most of the medals so far, they are sports that they have strongholds, wrestling, mm. Uh, badminton, um, weightlifting. Uh, weightlifting, those two most especially. Yeah. Badminton is even one sport that I'm even surprised mm -hmm. that you kind of get, getting a stronghold. Two Nigerians played in the fire. I know Luakbo, Kwe Yori and uh, Godwin Olufa, they played in the final. Two Nigerians and uh, they, uh, I know Luakbo won the gold medal. Then it was Nigeria all the way in the weightlifting, wrestling, the six women who, who contested. They won all the gold medal mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, available, you know. So I, I, I didn't come as a surprise to me. And we still have the athletics still another you know, strong area where we always do well, uh, you know, the track and field. Yeah. You know, so we should be expecting more gold medals. And it's a good one which goes to show that we are still a force when it comes to sport in, in Africa. The Egyptians they just went <laughs> left everybody behind. Exactly. You know, um, you know, build a strong uh, lead. So it will take some uh, stopping now for for the Egyptians to 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 uh, link with that of sport. But all the, all in all, a good one for the Nigeria uh, team, Nigeria, because uh, there wasn't much um, uh, talk about them prior to this competition. I think they just went about their preparation in the low key, and we are all seeing the the, the, the result. And um, hopefully, before the competition ends, they will still continue, they win more medals, and it will be a good one. Uh, for the team because um, this year we have the uh, Olympics in mm. Paris and uh, what better way to prepare for a major tournament like that than the African Games going on in Ghana. So definitely we wish Team Nigeria the very best as far as the African Games is uh, concerned. So James, over to Europe, uh, the English Premier League title race is actually heating up. You mm. know, we saw the clash between Liverpool and Manchester City at Anfield, which ended 1-1. And the, the the major winners in that kind in that encounter is actually Arsenal, yeah. who actually won their game a day before. That was against uh, Brent, Brentford, right. and which catapulted them to the Premier League summit. So how do you see the title race going? Do you think it's going to go to the wire or it's going to be another kind of, you know, uh, race where, you know, maybe a five games to go and the team will be champions elect or what? Well, uh, it's difficult to call, you know, because the three teams are vying for the title. They are just not letting go. Mm -hmm. um, Final Arsenal, they are top now, but there's no guarantee. Uh, there's nothing is, is set in, nothing is cast in stone yet. You know that among the among the three teams, you still want to give it to Manchester City because exactly. they've been doing it like over and over. And over. Yeah. These two teams, they they can attest to it, uh, especially Liverpool, who have <laughs> been in the twice. They've been you know, they've always been uh, uh, coming second best. Arsenal did it last season; they almost won it, but they they, they crumbled. But this is, in, I think, the different Arsenal team that we've we've been seeing. Yeah. Uh, I think they've learned learned a lot last season. So if you check out, they have the they've scored the most number of goals. They've considered the least number of goals. You know, that will show you that this is a team that, that learnt a lot from what happened last season. But at the end of the day, you still want to give it to Man City. Just like what we said, they've been in this 
for like forever. They've been in, in, involved in tied to the other three or three, two or three. There are some seasons where they just blew everybody away. So uh, if you and the kudos to Liverpool because they, they they're missing a lot of players, but they exactly. still find themselves, you know, vying for uh, trying to you know um, become champions. You know, you know. So uh, maybe they're just trying to do it for the coach who who, who will go at the end of the season. Yeah. You know, but all in all, it's, it's a good one. And this kind of uh, uh, li- uh, what what we want to see, not in the league where just one team. We just exactly. bulldoze their way to the title. I'm talking of the likes of uh, Ligue One in uh, in France, uh, by um, uh, the Bundesliga, where you. I you think by Liverpool saying might might sneak it ahead. So that was what we. Yeah. I know that this might sound uh, like, uh, but I think I I, I would want to buy Liverpool to at least break that jinx because yeah, exactly. it has been on for since 2013. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, I so think that was about 11 straight. 11 straight. You know, so it becomes boring. You know, so but in the Premier League, I mean, you have three teams, and not just the, not just those three teams vying vying for the title. You also have the the the, the quest for the uh, Champions League spot, yeah. the relegation battles. So everywhere is jam packed. So uh, we, we are in for a very exciting uh, uh, moment in the tail end of the of the season. And, yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. let's just wait and see at the end of the day who comes out. Of. But for me, if you ask me who we might win it, I will still rate City as number one. I will put Arsenal ahead of Liverpool because I think at the end of the day, Liverpool's injury might still come back to hunt. Mm. But they, they are missing a lot of players. Arsenal are on a high, you know, so for me, that's just it. Well, as far as sentimental uh, uh, stuff is concerned, I would prefer Manchester City not winning the Premier League title because winning four, you know, consecutively does not really uh, <laughs> good news for the English Premier League title because the term Farmers League will definitely come into 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 question so viewers uh, this is where we'll be wrapping things up as far as proceedings is concerned thank you very much james for the wonderful analysis uh, so do take care of yourself and bye for now